Hey guys, it's Eglizzy here, and in today's Destiny 2 video, we're going to be going over how you can complete this week's Grandmaster Nightfall, Exodus Crash. So to be honest, this week's Nightfall is a lot easier than last week's, so if you were able to complete last week's Grandmaster Nightfall, then you'll be able to complete this week's with ease. So for the setup that we went with here, we used one Divinity and then two Izanagis. That seemed to be the best setup to go with because you are going to be encountering a ton of Overload Champions. Alongside that we went ahead and ran all anti-barriers because the overload can be covered by the divinity guy and then I went ahead and ran a sword because swords here completely dominate. The best sword to possibly use is the throne cleaver. It is a legendary sword. You don't have to use an exotic slot and it hits really hard. So swords during this strike are going to be your best friend. You're going to be encountering a ton of overload champions and then there are a scattered amount of barrier champions throughout this strike. So the barrier champions are really light throughout this strike. You're only going to encounter around five of them total throughout the entire thing. But overload champions, you will be encountering around 15 of these champions. So definitely make sure you are using somebody with a sword. Swords with overload on them is an absolute must. They absolutely destroy enemies and then also also pairing this up with the passive guard mod you'll become an absolute tank when you are using the sword so swords are going to be your best friend when you are completing this strike definitely make sure you have at least one guardian with the sword on so throughout this entire strike, there are only two really challenging parts. The first challenging part is where you have to plant your ghost down, and you have to defend your ghost from waves of the fallen enemies. There's also an extremely hard part when it comes to taking down the final boss, but we'll go over that when we get closer to that final boss fight. For this part here, simply all you have to do is stick to the back of the stairway. So the way you entered into this fight, just keep staying back to the back of the stairway. The enemies actually won't be able to push that stairway too far, they'll be able to push to the top of those stairs but they won't be able to push any further so you can almost use that stairway as your safe haven in case a guardian falls down or anything like that you can retreat to this stairway and know that you're safe this seemed to work best throughout this entire fight we would just go ahead and fall back to the back of the stairway clear out the champions in the room and then move up to return to ghost it was really simple to get done and we didn't even have a challenge at this part at all we never had any wipes at this part so it's pretty easy to get done and you should be able to walk out of this encounter with around 10 lives so now moving on to the final encounter. For the final encounter, this is where our swords are going to make a pretty big deal here. So having at least one sword person is going to make the difference. What we did was hide on the left hand side. This is an actual cheese where you can come to this left box and you can just hide behind this box the entire fight. Hiding behind this box will prevent the boss from actually rushing you. So it will give you some breathing room when it comes to taking down the boss. Also the enemies won't just come over here and storm you. They'll kind of circle around the map also so you'll be able to take them out staggered over time. Time, so they'll come slowly at you instead of coming all at you at once. This seemed to be the best spot to survive inside of this room. Anywhere else we were just getting completely obliterated by the arc shanks and also by the boss just completely chasing us around. So once you are posted up behind the box, now it's just time to stay alive and damage the boss. Once you do get the boss to around 50% of health, you're going to want to let him just disappear and you're going to want to save a few ads in the room. This is going to give you time to get your supers back so everybody can have their supers back just in case. You want to make sure the bubble titan always has a super up because that is your panic super. You want to make sure the well always has a super down because that is an also a panic super. And then the tether helps with damage so you don't actually have to be sitting in this boss fight for too too long. So this really seemed to work for us staying behind this box. We were able to kill the boss pretty fast using this method and swords do make a huge deal here because when the boss is almost about to die, he is going to rush your spot behind this box. He doesn't care if you're in this cheese area, he's going to push this spot and this is where your swords are going to make the big deal. What we did was just hide inside the bubble and I completely obliterated the boss with a sword and it was an easy completion. Using these methods, we were able to complete this strike in around 30 plus minutes, so that's way better than last week. Last week took around 40 minutes to complete, and this week is around 30, so hopefully it just gets easier and easier as we go further along with these strikes. But if you guys did enjoy this Destiny 2 video, please be sure to let me know by slamming that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe for more, and I've been your boy T Glizzy, you guys have been my awesome viewers, and I'll see you guys in another. Peace.